Uh, thank you, Paul. And um, I mean, one of the one of the ways in which the all-party parliamentary groups for for Tamils has been an effective voice in in the UK Parliament under successive governments is by working on a cross-party basis. And that was the case when we had a Labour government and we're working with people like David Miliband and Gordon Brown to turn um, attention to, to what was going on in Sri Lanka as it has been under David Cameron and now um, Theresa May. And although there's been a change in Prime Minister and a change of the personalities in the government, uh, I think hopefully the, the UK government's focus and attention on human rights in Sri Lanka will continue and we, 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 we continue to raise these issues in the Houses of Parliament um, from both a, a government perspective and an opposition perspective too. Um, another reason why the all-party parliamentary group for Tamils has been um, effective in the UK Parliament is the close working relationship we have with the British Tamils Forum, um, which um, provides advocacy, research, and representation for the Tamil community in the United Kingdom, but also um, through its close links with the diaspora across the world and, of course, the Tamil, Tamil population at home in Sri Lanka too. So I'm delighted to introduce our next speaker, um, Ravi Kumar, the General Secretary of the British Tamil Forum. Thank you, Paul. Uh, uh, this is going to be a quick presentation, simple presentation. Uh, this is a uh, this is how we project uh, the uh, project the land grab. Color coded there in the dark red is post Mundiwalkar. That is the, the the war ended in 2009. Even though the conflict has not ended, we, we have lost significant amount of um, land according to that uh, diagram. And also, the land grab process has been slowed down during the armed conflict due to various security reasons. But it's now set in motion once again. Uh, if you look at this picture, this is a, a picture taken uh, during 2011 12, how intensely. The northeast is populated, is populated with uh, military camps, security camps. Since 2009, there are plans to grab lands in different forms, one of which is industrial development or service sector development, particularly targeting the most strategic uh, city, port city, Trinkapalli. The, how the uh, Sri Lankan military is stationed and how they are running businesses, you can, we want to see the world in the eyes through uh, the people who live there. This will have a long-term implication on uh, political, Tamil people, political and economic rights. If not st stopped now, this could uh, revive the resentment and may lead to a reignition of the conflict. And this is one of the um, in program. Uh, this is uh, to reveal the current true situation, this government is craftily masked from the international community to hide the ongoing land grab. The sinister long-term <coughs> objective is the establishment of a mono-ethnic singular Buddhist state through the permanent demographic changes. The current situation is, though there are some some land has been released, when compared to the land occupied by the military, that is 69,000 uh, uh, in March uh, two, 2016, only 2,500 acres of land has been released by the new government. Uh, that is 3.5% has been released in March 2016. So the rest is here, still in the north, out of uh, 70,000 acres, 67,000 acres still remain occupied by the security forces. This is one of the uh, statistical information by the government, statistic uh, department. Uh, this is uh, showing population by religion and geo-exclusion. Well, what we are trying to say here is, that even though there are very few followers of Buddhism, uh, Buddhist structures, both small and big, large, are being constructed after the uh, complete occupation by the security forces. In Jaffna district, it's almost 99% uh, Tamils speaking people. Uh, this is one of the temple, but this is okay. This is uh, there, and we, this has been uh, reconstructed. 
uh, it was there earlier, but all other, you can see the photos on the right, where one of the Hindu temple, uh, it, it has to accommodate or possibly accommodate Buddhist structure. And this is another place in the north, in Jasna district, where you can see, uh, I, I, I just quickly go through this presentation because it will take time. While I'm going to take the opportunity to explain the, well, the, the reasons behind the Buddhist structures. These are newly erected Buddhist structures. This has been done, or this is going on, uh, through the uh, state aided or military uh, military aided construction process. Here you can see a um, uh, navy guarding a new uh, newly constructed uh, uh, Buddhist structure. Th these are some of the new uh, newly constructed ones. These are again. This is Bamiya district. You can see the yellow ones. Only the yellow ones are single Buddhist or and uh, the rest are uh, if you take other AA division, DS division, very few Buddhists live. Bamiya district. This is one of the key area, strategic area where you can see the army uh, constructing and opening up a uh, uh, Buddhist structure. This is again in Ronia. This is in a, right. This is in Silnachi district. Again, minimum, uh, not even two percent Sinhalese live there. The Tamils are not against any other religions. They don't resist any any temples or any other religious constructions. But when it is intended to uh, marginalize their political and other power, they have to. This is, you can see ministers, prominent people, and security personnel are there. This is in, uh, in and around the army camp uh, in Anamulantakulam, Yak Yaki army camp. Uh, almost every single army camp, new British construction has taken place. This is in Kilnaki, a, a large area has been taken over. Look at the top right slide photo, the former defense secretary is opening up. So you can see the intention by These are not the only ones. Ah, this is one of, one of the most controversial ones. This is in Kilan of G, Irma model. Kanahai Wave Plum, it is, it was a, it is, it is a for old uh, Hindu temple within which the military possibly constructing a Buddhist temple. This is a military district. Nayaru. This is again in Kokalai, where a private land owned by the Tamil has been taken by force and construction is going on by military. And this is the most famous Mulliwai Kal. We have seen thousands of, of, of uh, hundreds of thousands of people suffered, many thousands uh, butchered, where a new Buddhist structure has been constructed. This is again Batuva, the last place where the people surrendered. It's again, we can see ordinary Tamils. This is a monument of conquest, not as a religious uh, um, construction. This is again, within the, the Hindu temple, there are Buddhist constructions. In Manar district, This is Trikeri Saram, which was a very old Hindu temple. It goes back to 60 or 600 years. And this is another one. It's again a, a structure inside the Hindu temple. This is Ampare, where the uh, one side is fully more populated by single Buddhists and the land towards the coastal area where the Buddhist structures are being built here in Ampara. The Hindu temple encroached 
Oh, okay, to my way. To construct a uh, structure. This is, these are all in the eastern provinces, previous one time in northern province. This is in Trigamali. These are new constructed, newly constructed ones. Yeah, this is one of the one of the famous uh, this is almost hundred percent or ninety-nine percent Tamil area in Trigamali. Uh, where a formerly a Hindu temple was there, it was a demolished and a new um, a Buddhist structure was constructed and because of the increase of uh, Buddhist uh, tourists, they are building a new bridge. This is in particular district. Not only constructing Buddhist uh, structures in order to uh, grab the land in future, they also indulge in, military is also indulge in local commercial activities. You can see as military of, uh, um, uh, sponsored businesses. The army has expanded its uh, non-military activities and engaged in large scale property development, construct and projects and business uh, ventures such as travel agencies, farming, holiday resorts, restaurants. We can see that some of them Later on, this is one of which we are in Kenya, uh, an Air Force uh, beach resort, nature park in holiday resort in Jatna Chandigulam, owned by army. These are some of the business ventures. This is one of the famous resort in Indian High Seki Resort, a beautiful holiday resort, opened up by the former Defense Secretary there in the picture. This is again another Navy-owned one. Ah, this is another one, the Nandi Kalal, which witnessed thousands of people dying in the last days of the war, where they they don't want to see, show any trace of the past and they have built beautiful um, hotels. This is a war museum in the same area. The formerly a terrorist swimming pool. The so-called terrorist swimming pool has been converted as a war memorial. They also not only occupy the local businesses, but they also threaten the local business not to do the similar kind of uh, businesses. Uh, these are some of the business, uh, the, those, produ those producers, agricultural producers are sold by the, the army and the tailor shops. This is another restaurant. So why the, all is these are happening? The, the story goes back to a few hundred years. The, the emergence of the militant political Buddhism in Sri Lanka can be traced back to ultra-nationalistic uh, teachings of Anagarika Dharmapala Thero. That is, during British colonial period, singular Buddhist clergy developed a revoked version of Sri Lanka's history through the Mahavamsa Chronicle or the story of the great, great race, written specifically to arouse the great singular race political or religious ideology. This ideology claims Sinhalese to be a special race born in Sri Lanka to protect the Sinhala Buddhism from Indian invaders and denies the existence of the parallel Tamil identity and ancestry in the island. It is this Mahavans ideology which led the marginalization of Tamils in their own homeland politically and economically. Every majority of Sinhala government elected in Sri Lanka worked towards establishing a single on this day when threatened by outside forces this monoethnic ideology withdrew itself, its core and externally morphed itself into an imaginary multi-ethnic state. The present Sri Lankan government, which also has the same, uh, follow the same ideology, struggling to come out from the past. And this is the reason that throughout its, uh, the, throughout these uh, few, uh, the, the two years, the intense militarization is not Reducing, it's continuing on the process of colonizing the strategic land and natural economic resources in the Tamil homeland. 
by promising a constitutional uh, change to the Tamil political leadership and promising improvements in human rights and accountability to the international community, it has bought time to implement these permanent democratic changes in the Tamil homeland. This is the reason that the Sri Lankan president and the government continues to request time to implement very minimal changes. Typically, every village and town in the Tamil homeland has a military camp, which are being used to construct Buddhist temples, businesses, and farms owned by the military. A nucleus enables further migration of singular people, state-aided or uh, uh, either open orally or tacitly. Uh, these called nuclear colonizations are strategically located near fresh water and econ economically fertile land and sea resources. Eventually, Tamil population is pushed into unfertile lands and are forced to migrate out of their own homeland. This strategy has been implemented through state-sponsored colonization since 1948. Since the end of the armed conflict in 2009, using the special powers granted to the under the Prevention of Terrorism Act, Sri Lanka military has been illegally acquiring and occupying these land resources. This is the reason that no real demilitarization has happened in the North and East. Sri Lankan state requires the military to implement a permanent democratic change, which in the end will make any constitution constitutional solution irrelevant as any Tamil state will have no control over the strategic economic resources giving rise to any real economic development for its own people. Thank you very much.